Dave, uh, did you want to go into the mandatory? I imagine let's, you wanted to let's ask go about into that. the mandatory. Yeah, I definitely. I think that's where everybody's tuning in is they hear your thoughts, Lou, about the decision of of Gennady Golovkin moving forward with Vons Matarosian instead of your guy. I mean, like, I can't really fault him for that decision. You know what I mean? Like, right. like you, you, you're, 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 you're about to make a shitload of money to fight a guy you beat once and that you're really jacked up to beat again, and then that guy blows a drug test, and everyone starts declaring him, you know, he's cleared before there's ever a hearing, and then the guy ultimately gets suspended, and you go from uh, a multi-multi-million dollar night to a night that's going to be, you know, uh, probably one of the lower purses he's made in, in recent years. And, you know, in that circumstance, do you want to fight my guy who's probably the toughest, you know, as tough a guy as you can fight out there right now um, without, without a giant reward? So, you know, I understand why he wants to get basically in, in what he views as as almost like a glorified exhibition, um, you know he has a huge money fight after this this uh, this dude gets off his suspension. Right. Um, I mean, and, it's a smart business move, right? I mean, I mean, you, I mean, I agreed with. I didn't. I mean, look, I, I'm well, with everybody. It, you just can't have it both ways. Here's the thing: there's nothing. Can't. I'm not faulting them for for doing that, but at the same time. Right. Um, you can't have it both ways. So if you don't want to take the risk and you don't want to fight my guy, my guy's got to earn a living. He's earned the right to be where he is. And you can't ask someone to step aside. See, it, people are getting confused. The, the, uh, the issue on stepping aside for Vadis, that's not the issue. Like, we don't care. I mean, we have enough respect for Golovkin. He didn't cause this situation. I mean, right. like, I don't love the fight. I don't really give a shit about the fight, and I probably won't even watch it if I have something better to do. But... But that being said, I mean, I, I, like, he didn't do anything wrong. It's the other guy that did something yeah. wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. So I don't have any, you know. So if he wanted to walk into the ring as, as champion and then, you know, start negotiations that Monday to fight Derevyanchenko next, then there'd be no issue. But if he wants to basically make my guy wait another six months when – because a guy broke the rules and tested positive, no, like that, you know, you can't have it both ways. If you're going to go for the money, then that belt goes away, and that's just a conscious decision you have to make. So as yeah. it stands, you know, they won't. The IBF has decided that they won't strip him for this fight. But that no, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that they've sent in the paperwork yet for an exception. I imagine they're going to. Uh, but, but but the point I'm making is like it's really never been about like like I mean we're not sitting there running around with legal documents trying to make sure he can't fight on May 5th. It's not about right. that. It's what happens the next day. I mean, and and basically, why does he need the belt on May 5th if he's going to not fight? If he's going to give it up afterward anyway? But but if he wants to walk into the ring with the belt on May 5th, uh, no one. Uh, that's not the issue. The issue is. What happens next? And if he's not fighting Sergey next, then then you know Sergey wants the the title vacated so he can get into the mix and fight a, a fight that's going to earn him money. He's got a wife and two kids, and he's earned the opportunity. He's a deserving mandatory. How unusual! This is why mandatories are, are, are created so guys like him can force the issue and make a living. Right. Well, I think you said it a long time ago. Uh... The, the phrase has been truncated and kind of co-opted, but I think you said on this show, the belts matter until they don't. Right. Uh, and they do. You know, uh, do you think this situation, and because anti-doping is so new on the landscape, you know, kind of going back to what 2000, but really becoming more pervasive since 2010 uh, with Floyd Mayweather doing USADA testing. Do you think it's time that the sanctioning bodies, take a look at this kind of exception? I mean, I, I don't even, I gotta be honest with you. I don't even know that the sanctioning body should be in the middle of the testing. I mean, if you want to know the truth, part of the problem right now is like, I mean, guys, I mean, look, I love the WBC and Mauricio for taking the initiative at the same time, no matter how much they like a guy or believe in a guy, you have to like, you know, sort of maintain 
adherence to your own sort of standards. And, and like right now, part, like, you know, most of these organizations, one of the things I've always admired about the IBF, and look, it was created, frankly, out of an era where there was trouble, and the IBF, you know, went into receivership and, 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 and really had to, to go move toward adhering to its own rules. But the IBF does adhere to its own rules, whereas, you know, it, it seems that a lot, a lot of people sometimes make up their own rules or change them or adapt them. And, and you know, I, right, right now, look, the state of, I mean, the total testing is BS right now to begin with. The fighters themselves are the ones signing up for it and then, you know, and, and doing, you know, really. And, and, and then also who's determining when it starts? I mean, you, you know that there's huge differences between, you know, starting four weeks before a fight and, and, and starting, you know, when a fight is first signed. And, and you know, look at this case, you know, I mean, it was the first time he was tested in Mexico and it apparently happened sooner than normal, you know, and, and, and just looking at the USADA website, Broner has been tested, tested eight times in the first two quarters of the year, but Vargas hasn't been tested at all. That's not well, a testing program. Well, I mean, you want to talk about not having a testing program. Um, Canelo, I mean, Canelo Alvarez was ordered, the BC put Canelo, inserted Canelo into their mandatory position and dictated that their, there should be an immediate rematch. And, you know, the BC is the one that has the more evolved uh, program in terms of, you know, testing for performance enhancing drugs and, and, and demanding that WBC fighters in order to fight for the BC and get ranked be part of their clean boxing program. And I don't know, I don't know if it changed in the last couple of weeks, but I don't recall Canelo being part of that program. No, he's not. He's not. Well, how, how could that be? I mean, how can that be? Except this is boxing. <laughs> this is boxing. Right. But otherwise, how right. could that be? How could that be? Right. Uh, either the their rules explanation rules was that because he's he, – well, I mean, I was just going to – their explanation for it was, well, because he's already in BADA testing, which makes no sense regardless. Um, he's not part of the clean, clean, clean program. boxing program. Right. Period. I mean, I've, I have loads of emails requiring me to have all my guys, you know, sign up and be part of the clean boxing program. You know, and, and, and you know, I, he's not part of the clean boxing program. How's that? You know, it's just. Right. Yeah, it makes no sense, but it, it does make sense. I mean, this fight is, is hypocrisy heaven, you know. Uh, we've had people defend Triple G as a guy that doesn't care about money, uh, only cares about the fans. You know, it, it is I mean, good, he but... should care about money. It's a frigging business, man. <laughs> like, what right. the fuck? I mean, like, look, yeah. the, most of these guys are going in there. And let me tell you something. If Triple G keeps taking punches, you know, with, with greater frequency like he has, you know, re, in, in recent fights, and he continues fighting well into his future, he, he's going to wind up paying a price too later. Because if you think that football is the only sport that has concussion issues, no one's paying attention. So, I mean, this is a business. This is a business, so Absolutely. he's making a business decision. But you know what? He has to respect other people's business decisions and rights also. So here's like what I would say. You know, if you're going to – if you, I would lay this on tri- Triple G and Tom. If you said, okay, guys, we, Triple G wants to walk in the ring May 5th and he wants to do this fight, he wants to walk in with the, with the belt, you know, uh, if they say – that's fine. If they say they're going to fight us next, then that's cool. And – you know, we'll start negotiations on May 7th. If we know that they're fighting on September 15th against Canelo. If that's what they're doing, they also know Canelo was suspended. He didn't hurt himself. He was suspended. So, like, then just say, okay, fine. We're, we, we, want, we want the exception for this fight, and we're going to vacate after this fight. I mean, you can't have it both ways. Right. Right. Let me ask you this just to to wrap up with it because uh, I'd heard this thrown out. What was your recourse here? I mean, you you could, you know, petition the IBF, but could you have said, look, I'll throw up X amount of dollars. Let's do a co-promotion or as the mandatory, you know, are you obligated to act a certain way and the lead promoter, you know, that has the the mandatory obligation, are they financially obligated a certain way? Can you explain that? if, If Tom had something to offer, you know, that was for a plan for Derevinchenko that involved the winners or, or involved certain – if he had a plan, we would have been able to, to listen to it. But the IBF doesn't allow step-aside money. 
So, like, the IBF is one of the few organizations that doesn't allow step-aside money generally. It's not, in, it's right. not something that's permissible in the IBF. Now, that being said, you know, no one ever said, hey, do you want to fight on the undercard May 5th? No one ever offered that, even though, you know, no one ever, that never came no, up. I, and, I, meant, I meant, you know, if you wanted it to be Triple G, Derevchenko this May 5th, could you have made an offer and said, I'll throw in a couple million into the pot or, or that, you know, let's make it a co-promotion? Is that a, was that a viable option? I mean, I, I don't, no, it wasn't an option really because I don't think that under any circumstances, Tom and, and Gennady and Abel were going to decide to fight Derevchenko on May fifth. I, I think. I mean, that, were there even a phone call to you, Lou? No, I mean, there was never a discussion. There was never an offer made for a fight. There, there was never an offer made for a fight. And, and it was. And look, I'll be. And it's, look, this is one of the reasons why I'm not upset with Tom. And I'm not. I mean, there wasn't a lot of BS. You know, it was clear. It just like we don't want to fight. You know, right now, yeah. In this situation, we don't want to fight Derevchenko. Uh, and you think it, you think what Chris Mannix is is throwing out there, calling Triple G, uh, saying that Triple G is ducking your guy. You, do you think that's accurate or? Like, because you said a little while, and I... Well, I mean, it's, 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 is it accurate? It's, 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 I don't think it depends on, on... Look, people are writing things with 140 ca- characters. So, it, it, right. is it accurate? I mean, it's accurate on one hand, but it's, it's, it's totally rational and explicable. I mean, I mean, yes, he's ducking the risk when he has a giant fight out there, and the mandatory is, is a motherfucker that he knows for years and years from when they were both amateurs, and 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 you know they you know believe me, Triple G knows fighters from 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 Eastern Europe, and Derevchenko is an amateur beast, and he's pretty much a beast as a pro. He's a I mean, tough out for any champion or anybody at the top echelon of middleweight. He's not a guy that when your purse goes down tenfold, you want to see across the ring from you. So, I mean, is he, he's ducking the situation, but do I blame him? No. Does it make him a bad guy? No. Does it make him less a champion? No. Do I, am I mad at him? No. Do I think it's irrational? No. Would I do the same thing if I was Tom? Yes, probably. But I'd also acknowledge that, you know, there are sacrifices with decisions. And one of them is he's not going to have every belt. Absolutely. Let's tr- jump over to uh, the big fight that everybody wants to talk about uh, with the biggest humans in the world. Uh, Deontay Wilder, your guy, versus Anthony Joshua. Uh, what's the latest with that? What do you, what do you know? 